It's Jack. And firstly, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all of you that subscribe to this channel. Uh, we just hit a thousand subscribers. Uh, I'm super happy about that. Uh, so thank you. If you haven't subscribed, now would be a great time to do it. Just hit that subscribe and hit the bell notification so you get notifications of new videos. Uh, but I just really want to say thank you. That's really heartening for me. I've Love putting these videos out. I love this community that's building, the, the engagement, the comments, the quality of the questions. So keep it all coming and uh, thanks for being here. Your, your presence matters. So this video is called, if he's unavailable or bread coming you, do these five things. So I'm gonna give you five things. Let's get right into it. The first thing you can do if he's really showing up unavailable is have the availability conversation. And the availability conversation is ideally a mature, sober, adult conversation about what you are both available for. And there's two parts of this really. And the first part is the impersonal part, right? So what is he available for at this stage of his life in relationship? What is he looking for from his dating? How much if he connects with someone is he looking to connect for them? So ideally you have this kind of conversation you know, somewhat early in the dating process just to harmonize realities, to build a more shared reality and to see if there's some kind of alignment between what he's looking for and what you might be looking for. Then, and this might be a little bit more risky, and I'm a fan of having the risky conversations from a place of acceptance, non-judgment and being centered in yourself if you can. But you can have the availability conversation about you know, what's he available for here? What, what is he looking for in this connection? What's he discerning about this connection? Um, if the connection were really unfolding well, what level of connection might he be available for? How many times a week does he imagine connecting with someone? And you don't have to hold him to all this, but it's, it's just helping you build uh, a, a picture of what's really going on over there with him. and. Uh, it's allowing you guys, rather than to be kind of playing games, which is often what happens in this territory, it's like, let's be adults with each other. It's okay if he doesn't want to date you long term, right? That's okay, that's his right. But it's better if you might have some kind of sense about that and if you can ask from a place where you actually say, you know, something like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a big girl, I actually want to know what, what's real here. You don't have to say anything that's going to please me or you think that I want to hear. I, I, I value the truth, I'm sure you do too. And so that's the essence of this conversation is let's kind of get, get to the truth. Let's have an authentic conversation with one another. Now, the other piece that could be a part of this, which you, know, you may or may not have experience of, um, is also if you've been dating for a while and you're still experiencing him kind of not really that available or really hot and cold, it's maybe just to say, hey, like, um, are you wanting to be in an exclusive relationship? Um, are you seeing other people? It's totally okay if you are. Just to kind of get that out so you, you kind of know. Like, is it that he is only connecting with you twice a week and you're the only person he's connecting with? Or is he connecting with you two nights a week and other people other nights of the week? Um, and again, we're, we're kind of going for a love of the truth here. It might be hard for you to hear these things and you want to let him know that it's, you know, you, you are wanting to be in reality with him. Um, but lots of times I think people aren't really aware where the guy is at at all and aren't risking that conversation. And I think the reason they're not risking that conversation is something like, well, if I say the wrong thing or I approach it the wrong way, you know, he's going to shut down, he's going to run away, or I could break the connection. Now, that is possible. And if you're really looking for partnership, which I know that a lot of you are, you're looking for something, you know, committed in relationship. If you're asking a question about that, has him run away and not come back, you kind of got your answer because the relationship doesn't have the robustness to, to kind of deal with the truth. And I, I, I'm pretty sure you want a relationship that can. So even if you're risking upsetting the apple cart, you want to risk upsetting the apple cart because that's what allows you clarity about the longer term um, potential of this relationship, particularly if this is not like the first three days. If you've been relating with this person for a while, I think it's okay to get in the truth. And he can always say, look, I'm not available for that conversation. You can respect his boundary, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be in the conversation. All right, so number two is uh, to help him clarify and you clarify what kind of relationship he might be available for. You may have in a previous video heard me make the distinction between partnership, lovership, and companionship. 
And I'm really just gonna make the distinction briefly here again, which is partnership is a day-to-day -day connection that someone wants to invest in, where you are in effect building something together. You're building a relationship, you're building a life. You There's some sense of commitment, there's some sense probably of exclusivity that you, you want to connect with each other most days of the week. You know, there's a huge variation in what this could look like, but sort of 90 plus percent of the time, there's a sense that, yeah, we, we wanna hang out with each other a whole bunch. I don't have to fight really hard to get his attention, even if he's, you know, a busy, mission-driven guy, that he, he kind of wants to connect with me and we both mutually wanna invest in something. And I'm distinguishing that from companionship, which, is mostly a friendship, right? It's mostly uh, a guy wanting some female companionship, but not really anything that has a reliable connection, not anything that has a promise into the future, something that may or may not be sexual, but that's probably not the, the main energy of it. Um, and most guys go through stages of the development where this is what they want. And they may not use this language, partner, lover, companion, but you can have it and you can ask a few questions or you even just keeping it in your awareness will probably make it much more likely that you can discern what he's actually available for. You know, unfortunately, and I would include myself in this historically, I don't think as men we're always good at distinguishing these kinds of things, particularly if we think that we are good partnership material. As a guy, if I think of myself as a good partner, even in the cycles of my life where I'm not actually available for partnership, I'm still thinking of myself as if I'm available for partnership. Now that's a problem because that kind of guy isn't available to partner in this cycle. And you can only date and connect with what's in front of you, right? You don't want to date the potential of the future. You want to date what's in front of you. And if someone's not available for partnership and that's what you really want, you can't try and make it into that. It just doesn't really work. Um, and the third thing in here is you know, what we call lover or lovership. And that's mostly a sexual romantic connection. It might be super intense, hot, passionate, whirlwind, but it's not really got the day-to-day -day bread and potatoes of a relationship, the kind of stability, the ability to come back together, to work edges, to do things together, whether it's you know build a home or a business or a family or just a life together. So helping you discern by your good questioning and probing what's actually in front of you, what kind of relationship could this guy be available for? And if you want partnership and he's not available for partnership, you're gonna have to walk away or downshift the relationship, right? Because we want you to get what? We want you to get what you want. We want you to be honest and own what it is that you want from a relationship. And if you want committed partnership, that is your stand. And if a guy isn't available for that, don't hang around. Close it down, and if it wants to re-emerge in a different cycle, great. But don't try and pretend, don't try and make this kind of breadcrumbs into this future partnership, because that is just not the path to tread in my experience of a lot of coaching in this area. All right, number three. Find out if you have a frustration complex. And what I mean by that is, are you regularly attracting unavailable guys? Because if that is the case, there's probably something on your side of the fence that we need to clean up. And we could spend all this time trying to you know, work out what's, what's going on over there with him and why is he doing this and why is he showing up hot and cold and et cetera, et cetera. And it's just, if you're constantly attracting this kind of men, it's like the, the preponderance, the, the main part of the work is likely to be on your side of the fence. Now what I'm calling a frustration complex um, and you may, in a previous video, I talked about the frustration object relation, big fancy phrase, but it, it kind of means that you often have this sense of a frustrated quality in life, that the things you want don't arrive for you, they don't quite happen, um, that they're beyond your grasp or reach, and this might be showing up in your love life. So if, if you are noticing this pattern, then in a sense, you wanna, before you get romantically involved with a guy, you want to get really good at stages one and two here, right? Which is having the availability conversation and working out, is he available for lovership, companionship, or is he actually available for partnership? And start to get better at that before you develop feelings, before you be sexual, before you get entwined or bonded or corded with a guy. You want to get good at really noticing the availability. And I would actually encourage you to have some accountability here, to have someone in your life, whether that's a coach or a therapist or a trusted friend that you're actually gonna check into that and check in with them about someone you're dating and describe the availability and just get a reality check. Because sometimes friends can be really good at this. It's just 
you talking it through and noticing, huh, is this guy actually available for something? And if he's not, again, you might have to do the hard thing and say, even though I'm really interested, I'm not going to start running that pattern. I, I've, I've done that. I've, I've done the, there's the oasis in the desert that I never get to. I'm always thirsty. I'm always frustrated. Um, and I'm, I'm taking a stand that I want to do something different. All right. Step four. Uh, step four is to use his unavailability as an opportunity. Now you say, well, what's that about, Jack? Well, what that could be about is you actually getting to befriend yourself. Sometimes there's a pattern that I've seen happen, which is if women aren't able to spend high quality time with themselves, like the company that they keep, they're always looking for that to be met externally. And many guys, even probably most guys, might struggle to meet you in that way in relationship. And it might, even, they, even if they were able to, it might be stopping your deeper development. Said differently, you know, what is your relationship with yourself? What is your relationship with hanging out with yourself, getting to know yourself, whether it's, you know, journaling or meditating or just being, just in your own beingness without having to put your attention on something? What happens there? For some people, there's a void, there's an emptiness, there's a lack of contact with self, and it's kind of scary and it's fearful. And you might be avoiding that by putting all your attention on relationship. And, you know, some people get away with that, right? There are plenty of people in long-term relationships and marriages who haven't learned this thing, but you might be interested in deeper development, right? That might be one of the reasons that you're here. And if you are, you may want to explore this because it, I think it will give you a more conscious relationship and I think it will give you more intimacy in relationship because you're actually more intimate with yourself. So another way of saying this is like, what's your relationship with your own uh, aloneness or solitude? Like, are you able to hang? And if you're not, this could be the developmental opportunity that you've been waiting for. And he might be offering it to you, even though it, you may find it really hard and difficult. Um, and if it's too painful, ongoing, 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 ongoing with him, you may have to decide to, to, to let it go because it's just you know, wrecking your nervous system. But if you can keep your nervous system within a certain bandwidth, this might be your opportunity to have some connection in your life, maybe a little bit more of a lover companion connection, whilst you're actually deepening your relationship with yourself. You know, said differently, could you ask yourself the question, what are you best available for in this cycle? You know, are you, you might yearn for partnership, but do you need to have some months or maybe a year or two of your own solitude where principally you're not oriented to relationship in order to wake up certain capacities within yourself to really deepen your secure attachment to yourself, to deepen your ability to presence yourself, be with yourself, like yourself, diminish your inner critic, notice it, presence it, you know, all this kind of stuff. You can do that in relationship, but there's a certain flavor of it that might actually be easier to do if you're not in relationship, knowing that maybe you might be someone who's a bit more anxious, preoccupied in relationship, right? So you keep a lot of attention on the relationship in a way that may not be serving you and your own development and spiritual path. So perhaps he's offering you an opportunity that you didn't even realize, and maybe there's something you can step into there. Oh, now I'll go for the fifth way. So the fifth way is, is pretty simple. It's called just stop. Just stop. And this is the... Okay, I noticed that ongoingly he's not really available. So I'm going to stop holding the relationship up. And I'm going to start putting my attention elsewhere on my own life. You know, maybe for some of you it might be that you are not going to be exclusive with this guy and you look at dating elsewhere or you open up to relationship possibilities elsewhere. But you effectively you're you're giving a trial period to the relationship where if you stop putting the level of investment in what happens sometimes what happens is the guy steps up right you sort of like you put him on initiation duty what i mean by that is that he's the one that has to initiate which for most of you is what you want anyway right so if you stop initiating and making plans and filling the calendar and making things happen does he step into that because there's a system dynamic and sometimes if you've been more in the agency initiation, more in the masculine in some sense, maybe if you, you let that relax, he steps in more. Sometimes that, that's what happens. Now, sometimes what happens, which is probably what you're afraid of, is not a lot happens, right? He's not really initiating. He doesn't really step up. And what that probably means is he's not really available for committed partnership. 
or he's not available for committed partnership with you, or the view he has of committed partnership is so sort of solo and hermetic that it doesn't really work for you. And it, in any of those instances, you, they may, you may then have the blessing of the information that this isn't really a relationship that's going somewhere. So as tough as that may be to hear, you may want to get to that point. You know, it's kind of like blowing it up. It's, it's, it's really getting to see. And as hard as that may be, I'd much rather you're investing somewhere where it makes sense to invest than hoping that this guy is going to transform and change. Anytime you're needing a guy to transform in order to stay in relationship, you've got a problem. Most guys aren't going to transform on your time. Most guys aren't going to transform for you and neither would you want them to really. You want them to transform for themselves or you just want to partner with a guy who's available for the kind of thing that you're available for. And there's plenty of them out there. You may have a pattern of not attracting them that you might have to look at. Um, you may need to get more skillful in the conversations of discerning what a guy's available for, but there are plenty of available guys and I want you to be one of them, if, if, with one of them, if that's what you really want for your life. So thanks for being with me. I hope this is useful. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Questions and comments below this video. Thanks again for those of you that have subscribed. I'm really happy that this community is growing this way and I look forward to being with you again soon. I'm Jack.